Welcome to Weekly Code Quickies, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number 39 and in today's episode we are taking a look at the latest 10 updates of Visual Studio Code and that is to version 1.86.1 and 2. We're going to take a look at 10 new updates that would be the per window zoom levels, hey code voice command, multi-file differential editor, triggered breakpoints, expand the sticky scroll support, markdown paste option, flexible autosave options, source control input, extension notification, and at number 10, GitHub Copiler update. So hope you're excited for episode and let's get started. We're going to get started with number one, which is per window zoom level. So let me quickly demonstrate this. We're having here in the background, Having any slides today we're going to work on the latest course that i'm releasing that is 10 javascript project so we're going to work on this going to explain most of the updates in here because we need something to demonstrate it so we are going to have some multi-level zoom per window that is so let me just demonstrate this if you're holding down command or control on a pc i'm on a mac so i'm going to hold down command and plus and it's going to zoom in the editor. Now, this is going to zoom in everything. This is going to zoom in the, the file explorer. It's going to zoom in the, the bar here. It's going to zoom in the code. And now you will see down here a little loop icon appearing. So also, if you're in the car, please just listen to my voice. Do not watch the video version if you're on Spotify. Uh, because I'm going to explain everything pretty detailed. So if you just zoomed in, you're going to have a little zoom icon appearing down in the editor. This is going to indicate how often you zoomed in. For example, I zoomed in three times. It's going to indicate the number three. And if you wish to zoom out, you can also do this manually from here. Also zoom in again. Or you can just click on reset. And this is going to reset everything to a default value. But it's extremely interesting. Now if I zoom in and open, let's say, a different window, you can see this is also zoomed in. But if I would make this editor smaller. And by the way, I don't know if you knew this or not. We can drag and drop windows outside of Visual Studio Code, opening a new window. Now, if I would change the zoom here and zoom out, this will only influence one window. And this will also remain so if you close and open up the program. So this is why it's called per window zoom in. Okay, so I'm going to close this up and hit down here the reset. And we're going to move now to number two, which is hey code voice command. So let me quickly demonstrate this. You do need a copilot you know, for this to work. So I'm going to hold down command and I or control I on a PC. This is going to open up copilot. Now you're going to see to the right side of the chat box, you're going to see a little voice icon. Now you can start this voice icon by, uh, by saying, hey code, but you will need to initiate it first of all through your commands i'm going to tell you which commands which properties you have to activate if not just click on it and now it's going to listen what to everything that you're talking here so i'm going to stop it Whoa. Ha! let's open it up again let's click on it and then i'm going to ask it to write me a function write me a function to create to calculate the birth date and it's going to it's working it's working and there we go so function calculate birth date takes in an argument current age and that's going to create and it just created the, the entire function, okay? So I'm going to discard here the function. And yes, this is extremely useful. Now, you can start the voice chat with the voice command just saying, hey, code. Uh, but you need to activate it, first of all. And this feature will is available also on Windows, on Macs, and on Linux. Now, you need to start the accessibility. But here are a couple of available options. So... Chat in view will start the voice chat from the chat view. Quick chat starts a quick voice chat from the quick chat control. Inline chat starts the voice chat from uh, inline chat. And you're going to find all of these indications in the blog post down in the description below. So check out the blog post. You're going to find everything that I did here. You're going to find also in the blog post. You can read it up and check out all the commands. And the last command will be chat in context that is going to start voice from inline chat if the focus is on is in the editor okay otherwise the voice chat will be started from the chat view okay so let's go now to number three which is multi-line 
different editor. Now, this is an ex extremely cool feature. You can now quickly review different cr differences, crosses, multiple lines of the source source control. I'm going to show you just in a couple of seconds how this works. When you open up your source, source control, or maybe if, yeah, also in, on your Mac, it's going to have this, you're going to have the source, source control up here. And instead of the PC, is going to be on the left side here. Uh, so this is going to allow you to review changes across multiple files without having to switch within the tabs. So in previous versions, you would have to switch between tabs, but now it's going to show you all of the changes. So I'm going to make a couple of changes here to multiple files. So here a comment, comment, hit save. Then I'm going to uh, do here in the CSS. I'm going to comment, hit another comment, comment, hit save here. And let's, I'm just going to go through all of these files here, comment. I misspelled it, no worries. We can also differentiate here. Now, in order to see all of these changes, and these changes are local changes, stage changes, incoming outgoing changes, stash changes, pull requests, everything that you do will be displayed in, you're going to go to source control, then you will see the changes uh, drop down here. Okay, you can click on it. And to the right of the changes drop down, you're going to see a file with the plus minus. It's going to, if you hover over it, it's going to say view changes. Now, if you click on this, it's going to open up all of the files where you execute the changes. And, and if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you will see that I have to my left side, the initial uh, code, and to the right side, the changes that have been made. And also it's telling me in which file this happens. So in AppJS at uh, the fourth application retirement calculator, then in the CSS app, also in the retirement calculator, then in the PyChart app, CSS, and so forth and so on. So this is extremely, now if I would commit it, so forth and so on, but this is extremely helpful. Okay, now I'm going to close all of them up and I'm going to delete these changes. Dave, I don't want to change here anything. It's going to be the source code for the course. I don't want to change the source code for now. Okay. Also, this is going to be available on GitHub for those of you who are going to buy the course. Now, let's go to number four, trigger breakpoints. Now, for me, this is not that useful. I code in JavaScript, but for those of you who are Python users, it's going to work something like this. You're going to click the breakpoint here and click another breakpoint, and you can now efficiently debug with, uh, with breakpoints dependencies. When you set the breakpoint, you can now configure it to only trigger when another breakpoint is hit. This is useful when you have a breakpoint, let's say that is too often, and you only want to trigger it when another breakpoint is hit. Now you can configure the triggers and the breakpoints from the breakpoint settings, and I'm going to leave everything in the blog post description because I don't code in Python, I don't code in C, so I can't really show you this. Okay, now let's go to the next one, which is going to be expanded sticker scroll support. This is so cool. Let me just show you something really quickly. Before this, we only had expandable stick, uh, sticky scroll in the code. Meaning, take a look at this. Let me, let me show you the add button. So if you're watching the video version, I have a add button on, dot on click and so forth. So this is a function with an event list. Now, if I scroll up, going to see it sticks here also going to have drop shadow now as long as i remain within my within my function it's going to remain sticky to the top as soon as i leave it it's going to uh leave it and go to the next function or everything let's take a look at this function calculate the total categories it's a really long function but this is so cool because you will always know in which function you're in also in HTML, if you create a large section that you, you will know you're in the services section or you're in the photo section or something like that. So this was extremely helpful. Now, let me close up the source control. It is also available on the left side, meaning it, the, the scroll support is also is, uh, available on the left side on the Explorer tab. So as you can see here, I'm in the apps folder with the budget planner app and now I'm in the source for the for the budget panel app. And as soon as I leave it, I'm going to jump to the seventh project, which is the savings goal tracker. And it will scroll down, down, down. It's going to show me I have one folder, the source. Then it's going to scroll to the CSS. And then if I'm in modules, 
going to scroll only in modules. So it's going to hover modules, leave modules sticky, and show me exactly where I'm at. So super interesting and helpful for navigation, of course. Okay, let's jump to the next update, which is Markdown Paste Option. Okay, so let me go to a Markdown file here. Uh, okay, let me just leave the file here. Let's say I'm going to create here text. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel or Spotify. Now, I have typed out a simple text in Markdown. Now, I could copy now, for example, my YouTube channel link, select YouTube channel, the text that I typed into my Markdown file and just paste over it. And it will automatically transform it into a link. Also, if I would do now a shift control B, which is going to open it up in a PDF, I could now visualize this by clicking on it. And this is going to open then up, uh, where, do you, where do you have it? Ah, there we go, the link to my YouTube channel. So simple as that, you can now paste in links and open them up easily. So just copying a link, selecting a specific text, pasting in over that text, the link, and is going to, well, link it up. I'm going to change this, uh, delete this because I don't need it. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is flexible autosave options. I'm just going to talk about this a bit. You can now skip autosave on error or save only on specific file types. Meaning, let's say you have a MD file and let's say you have a JavaScript file. You can set the MD file, the Markdown language file, to autosave in the options. I'm going to leave the code how you can set it in the blog post and leave the JavaScript file to only save on, well, you're on your specific commands because the autosave will always have a delay, a delay and your save will need a specific command. You can then command S or file and save the file each time you make a change, but it doesn't need to be so. You could also set the JavaScript file to autosave or a TypeScript file to autosave. You can set specific files to have or do not have autosave. Amazing option, I would say. So let's jump to the next one, which is source control input. You can now customize the commit input and per language editor settings. You can now configure your input from the settings, of course, and you can also configure the per language editor settings from the JSON file. So basically, I'm going to leave the, the settings in the description below. Just take a look at it. It's pretty simple editor dot rules, let's say 50, 70, and then editor word wrap off. And then you can also set a specific font to it if you wish so. Okay, let's jump to the next extension, which is extension notifications. Such a cool one. Actually, it's annoying <laughs> because you can now have fine guided control of disabling notification for extensions or per extension. Now, when I am creating courses, this is so annoying. When to the right side, a pop-up appears that some extension is just making an update. Why now? Stop it, please. You can configure the extensions notification from the settings, of course, by basically turning off notifications from and just typing the extension. So turn off notification notifications from, typing the extension name, and it's going to turn off the notification. Uh, one next thing, this new feature is added to the do not disturb mode it's basically an extension for the do not, do not disturb mode, which globally disables all notifications, okay? Accepting error notifications. But if you are using do not disturb mode, then you're not going to see any kind of notification. This is what I'm using actually when I'm uh, creating my courses. So the problem was pretty much solved for me. Also, I do not know why you would like to have a specific notification for it. Or why would you like to have notifications for a specific up a specific add-on in Visual Studio Code? I just don't get it. Each time I open up Visual Studio Code, I'm going to have my bubbles here. Okay, some kind of extension just needs to update. I'm going to update it and never lead, le, uh, leave it to update automatically. Then I'm going to restart Visual Studio Code and I'm going to start coding. Because this happen pretty often because I have it just constantly running, so it's not going to take that much time. Okay, so let's jump to the very last one, which is GitHub Copilot updates. Yep, you can now enjoy improved default context, add files, 
file as context and AI fixes. You can now also configure the GitHub Copilot settings from the settings, which is editor.inlinesuggest.font family, which we're just going to change the font family for the type uh, for how you're going to type in your copilot commands. So basically you're going to open up the copilot and this font right here can be changed now, which you can do it from here from configure. It's going to open up the inline chat and uh, then you can go through the features and set your favorite font. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the episode of Wiki Code Quickies. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a review in Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you're getting your podcast. Also, if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. For me, I'm going to get to my bag back there and pound my energy out. So, happy coding. Take care. Bye-bye.